Relationships are actually two sides yeah. of one coin. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the one side is forgiveness, right? So when, when there's an offense, yeah. we forgive so that we can get free. But on the other side of that coin is mm -hmm. repentance. Yes, mm -hmm. there is. Come on. And if a person is not repentant mm -hmm. for what they've done, they're basically gonna do it again. And there comes a point where you can forgive, but that doesn't mean you have to be in relationship Absolutely. with an Absolutely. unrepentant person. Yes. And so some of us are like, oh, I just, I can't move on. It's like, well, you do have the power to forgive. After a couple years of being in pastoral ministry, I remember going into a prayer meeting early in the um, morning. And as I was steering into the parking lot, I felt the voice of God interrupting my thoughts and and, you know, I, I wouldn't normally just like casually just say, I heard God. But then, you know, I, I, I genuinely heard him interrupting my thoughts and asking me, Faith, when was the last time you did anything out of love? Mm -hmm. And I was a pastor at that time. And so I remember just sitting in the parking lot thinking, oh, like I, because I was good at my job. That was a scary mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. You know, and I was doing a lot of things mm -hmm. for the Lord because it was right, because mm -hmm. it was just, because it was expected of me. Right. Mm -hmm. I was competent. I was dedicated. Mm -hmm. I hustled. Mm -hmm. But when I looked into my heart, I realized after a while, the pain has put me to a place where I was no longer doing things out of love. Huh. Mm. In a way, I was putting up these walls mm. that was keeping me from enjoying people anymore, mm -hmm. keeping me from wanting to be genuinely connected. Um, but it was scary to me because on the outside, nothing looked wrong. Yeah. I looked totally fine. Everything mm. was great. Um, so I feel like it's a tricky thing for us to really um, survey our hearts and really introspect um, what has pain and disappointment from others done to us? And a verse that challenged me deeply, and every time I read it, it always shakes me. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 to 12, where Apostle Paul says to the Corinthians, we have spoken freely to you, yeah. Corinthians, mm -hmm. and open wide our hearts to you. Mm. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from yeah. us. Oh, wow. Every time I read that, oh my God, I'm so good at withholding <laughs> with affection. Oh, you know, I'm yeah. so good yeah. at withholding that. And so I would love for us to talk about that, the complications of that, that nuanced journey yeah. of what does it mean to have healthy boundaries mm. and not put up the kind of walls that mm. isolate us. Yeah. 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 I mean, when I th literally, my mind goes to, it, isn't it just so obvious that the enemy wants to isolate us? Totally. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's Always. like his strategy is Always. so obvious, mm -hmm. yeah. but we have such a hard time with it yeah. because again, it's safer to build a wall and I won't get hurt again. Mm -hmm. right. And I remember just um, being at these points where uh, I felt betrayed and mm -hmm. hurt from people in the church and I had yeah. church hurt. You know, we talk a lot about how leaders hurt people in the church. Mm -hmm. And we talk a lot about the sheep and how the sheep mm, yeah. hurt mm, each mm, other. Mm, mm. But we don't talk a lot about how the yeah. people, yeah, come on. we're human too, come the on. pastors yeah. and leaders, we are yeah. human too and yeah. do, do get hurt. Yeah. Right. So I remember getting to a point where I did no longer minimized mm. the, the pain of that yeah. and um, began to go into the other person's world because the goal was for me to bring this wall down. Yeah. Right. Because I'm like, okay, if I know it's the strategy of the enemy to isolate, right? Sure. Um, he doesn't want me to be in relationship mm -hmm. and it'd be so easy for me to give into that. So I, re I made a decision that I was gonna refuse to not love again because mm -hmm. I love, I love, being able to love is yeah. such a gift. Yes. Right. I refuse to not experience that love yeah. that I felt when I came into the church. Mm -hmm. into the family of God. Yeah. So I was like, what is my part in the dysfunction that I'm experiencing right now? Mm -hmm. And I started actually, as I prayed for my enemies, yeah. I began to pray and say, God, examine my heart, because what if I'm the enemy to somebody I and like I, yeah, I unconsciously <laughs> or unknowingly right. yeah, yeah. hurt people too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's like, I, I kind of made this decision that in order for me to love, I'm gonna have to accept the fact that I'm the offender sometimes. Yeah. Oh. yeah. 
Oh, absolutely. I'm the offend. I'm the boundary violator sometimes, yeah. unknowingly, unconsciously, without the re- intention to. But I have hurt people too. Yeah. So just really making that effort to go make amends and say, hey, just own my part. Yeah. in any hurt or any dysfunction or anything that has happened because I don't want somebody that has been called to my church, mm-hmm. I've been called to shepherd them, I want them to leave me, leave my relationship. If they're going to leave, they're going to leave, right? They right. belong yeah. to me. Yep. Yeah. But if they're going to leave, like let them leave better. Yeah. yeah. Not hurt by me. There's a saying that hurt people hurt people. It's real. Because when we feel wounded, a lot of the time we project it onto other people. And here's what the Lord has shown me, that every morning when I wake up and I give him thanks for creating me, who I am, and he reminds me of my identity in him, and I really secure a foundation in who I am in God, I feel like a a bubble comes around me, and I can picture myself in this bubble. And you know what? I get to decide what comes in my bubble. So when someone throws a dagger, when someone says something unfair and painful, it I get to just catch it on the outside of the bubble and decide if I'm gonna let it in or not. If it doesn't align with my truth for myself because it's something painful and um, wrong or hurtful, that doesn't line up with what I will allow into my bubble as truth. Sometimes we'll hear something that's hard It's a hard word. My husband is my blueprint for growth. So a lot of the time he says things about me that are truth that don't feel good. Again, I've got to weigh that thing, make a decision. How much truth is in this? And then I get to decide what I let in. I no longer allow just anything and everything anybody says to come in. I am responsible for myself. I can't control what other people do. So I just appreciate the Lord teaching me these boundaries that keep me safe. The way I talk about it when like, you know, the sheep hurt the shepherd is like when the sheep bite the shepherd. And uh, I had a situation that it really like made me confront myself. Um, because of my childhood trauma, I tend to be a pretty forgiving person. And it's it's really dissociation where when you when you don't control your environment, you just you have to learn to like let things go because yeah. like, what are you gonna do, right? And so people who would do things to offend me I would just quickly like let it go because I'm like, look, we got to move on. Um, well, we had a situation where there was um, a leader at the church who I really loved. Mm-hmm. I was very close to that person. And one day I was in my husband's office and I overheard them talking about me oh, wow. um, mm-hmm. in the, the other room. They didn't know I was there. And it deeply hurt me because it was someone who I really like trusted and loved yeah. and was there for them and all that. And so I, I went to her after the facts and I told her and she was like, Oh God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt yeah. you. And, and of course I was like, okay, you know, let's move on. And I never thought about it again. Well, fast forward a couple of years and, um, you know, she held a leadership role at the church. The pandemic was spinning up yeah. and we really needed her to fulfill her job for the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh no, I, I can't do it. And so it left my husband and I in a lurch. And, mm. you know, I have always been multivocational. So I support yes. our local church, but <laughs> yes. then I also have a really big job and my job mm. got even more demanding during the yeah. pandemic. And uh, I was just so frustrated that when I found out about it, like mm. I lashed out because mm. I was just like, you know, like we need you right now. If we yeah. ever needed you before, this is what we need you. Yeah. And I can't believe that you're not, you know, s- stepping up. And, um, it was just a bad situation. And I went back, I prayed about it because God will never let that rest. Like I, I'm not the kind of person yeah. that can just like hurt yeah. somebody and get on with life. Yeah. So I prayed about it. I went to her and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like that yeah. was wrong of me. That yeah. was wrong. And she said everything was okay. But then fast forward, her husband reached out to my husband and was like, everything's not okay. Wow. And I remember in that moment thinking, how can everything not be okay? Like I forgave you. I hadn't thought about anything about what you did. And then here you're holding this against me. And I think in that moment, I had to realize that sometimes when we hurt other people and, you know, they may not forgive us, they can hurt us and we can forgive them, but we still have to be able to love them, right? Because that can become resentment. Oh, totally. Right? It's like, wait, I forgave you. Right. Why aren't you forgiving Mm me? Yeah. But the the onus is not on them. Mm -hmm. It's on us. Mm -hmm. So when our heart is broken, like we still have to forgive. We still have to love. Even if they're holding against us the very thing that we could hold against them, that is hard. And when you're in church leadership, (laughs) 
having people basically resent you for the same hurt mm-hmm. that they caused you, but then you have to be the bigger person. It's like, Lord, I need extra grace for that. Yeah. Yeah. And God is still working on me, y'all. Mm. Yeah. I'm just being honest. I think the part that <laughs> you highlighted was, <laughs> was grace. Yeah. You know, and I think, especially in a time when we're all about own up to where you did wrong. Very good. We, yeah. we all should. Mm-hmm. And we should all keep each other accountable. Yeah, sure. But at the end of the day, any functioning community needs grace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I feel as though, I, I remember once um, <laughs> we had this family that we're very, very close to. Their kids are close to my kids. And, and it was such a God-given gift for us because we went through so much during the pandemic and it was just so great. I remember uh, once one of my daughters came up to me and she's like, um, the girl from the other family, she said, I had small eyes. And then like immediately, like my trigger, you know, and, <laughs> and you know what? And I think there's a lot to that conversation, but when it came down to it though, it was just a child yeah. and she wasn't trying to bash on her. It was just more an like, oh, your eyes and my eyes are different, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. I think that was what she was art- trying to articulate. She was like nine, uh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like she's a nine-year-old girl and she's so sweet. And I knew her. And I remember in that moment, um, do I es- escalate this? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, do girl. I escalate yeah. this? Or do I acknowledge yeah. that sometimes we need to give each other some grace? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, do I make every moment of pain something where we have to go deep about issues and you know what I mean like mm-hmm. I think there are definitely opportunities for that and I sure. think these are important discussions mm-hmm. however in that moment I was like you know what honey I don't think that's what she really meant like knowing her yeah, and, yeah. and knowing yeah. her and just telling her we in order to function as a family we also on top of being accountable to one another have to give each other some grace The thing about forgiveness that's tricky is that we tend to believe it's giving our offender a free pass. Like we tend to believe, well, if I forgive them, especially if they haven't apologized, that somehow I'm just letting them off the hook. But here's what you have to know. Forgiveness isn't letting someone off the hook. Forgiveness is letting someone off the hook and realizing it was you on the hook the entire time. Because when we don't forgive, we remain in bondage to bitterness. We remain in bondage to the offense. And so forgiveness really is kind of like a key that unlocks the chains keeping us in bondage to our past so that we can actually head toward our future in freedom. We are required as Christ followers to approach things from a different perspective, like as far as these hurts and this pain and the offenses, like Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to the Bible uh, scholar here, but like (laughs) where it says something, I don't can't remember where it says, if at all possible, whenever it depends on you, live in peace with all men, Mm. all men. Mm. That means everybody, everybody, like, Mm -hmm. so when it is possible, so we have to make the effort. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But then sometimes as much as it depends on me, I will do my part. But what if they reject Girl. your amends or your apology? Wow. Yeah. Like, what do you do one. then? Yeah. <laughs> this is the world we're currently living in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Racism. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I think at the end of the day, you, all of us in this cancel culture world Mm. where, um, Mm. you know, a lot of us are forgetting that Jesus did actually cancel sin on the cross. And Mm. therefore Mm -hmm. we all have a responsibility um, because of the errors that have happened. I mean, even last night, you know, I was watching a, uh, uh, what it, she said, the movie that came out about um, Harvey Weinstein and all the yeah, you know, sex abuse yeah. scandals. But not every, um, a kid yeah. saying something yeah. thoughtless. Yeah. My husband doing something thoughtless. My mm-hmm. next door neighbour forgetting to do something is not at the same level as all of these things. It's like suddenly though, so true. everything yeah. is mm-hmm. at that level. And yeah. I'm like, if everything, the danger of that is everything, if it, everything is at that level, it's going to numb else. everything, everyone yeah. and nothing will be at that level yeah. anymore. And you're going, hang on, there are some really important things. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, like human trafficking is wrong. Abuse is wrong. You know, racial yeah. injustice is wrong. There, These things are absolutely wrong. But we're taking like, offences that scripture just says, you know, like deal with it. Don't let a root of bitterness um, take root in your heart because you're going to, it's going to defile many. Where 
do we need to overlook an offence? It is to a man's glory to overlook yes. an offence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, love covers a multitude of sins, uh -huh. forgive 70 times seven, so that you're free because people are bound right now, bound yeah. in offence and bitterness and unforgiveness mm -hmm. and anger. You know, I come from a background of childhood sexual abuse and so I was masterful at guarding my heart. When I read the scripture, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow all of the issues of life, I really took that like putting a security guard in front of my heart rather than what it means of, of building walls of protection, but not walls that lock me in, just walls that keep bad things out. And I think sometimes we become prisoners of ourselves in the way that we guard our hearts. You know, we make silent vows. Nobody will ever do that to me again. I will never trust like that again. I will never, and we vow and we lock ourselves in a prison. We don't let anybody in. We don't open our hearts up to anybody else. And so then we don't find healing and wholeness and we don't live the flourishing lives that God's called us to live. Building walls, having boundaries is a healthy thing. Boundaries are biblical right from the book of Genesis. Genesis. God put boundaries with oceans and land. Boundaries are part of what God does. But boundaries are not prison gates that lock us in. What we have to learn to do is make sure that we protect ourselves from potential harm, that we're very wise with the situations we put ourselves in or the people that we let into our lives. But we don't lock ourselves in a prison wall where we no longer open our lives and our hearts to other people. Matthew 18 is the framework, right? right. Like, look, if, if your brother, if your sister offends you, go yeah. to them, mm -hmm. yes. the two of you, and talk it through because yeah. you will then often find that your understanding of the situation wasn't the full understanding. Not at all. There, there may have been other, I, I've talked to so many people where maybe there was an offense uh, that either they did or I did. And yeah. we came to an understanding where there were things happening that they didn't even realize. There were things that they, in their life that I didn't even realize. And of course, if after that, right. then we can't work it out, that's when you bring in somebody else. But what we do is we rush to the public square. We're yeah. like- As, as know, the first port of call. As the first step. Yeah. And, right. but, but that speaks to the fact that I'm not trying to resolve it. No. Mm -hmm. I basically right. just want to I just use want it to be as a heard. platform. I also right. yeah. want to be heard. I know for me, I've, I've gotten better. I've gotten a little better, everybody. But um, the Lord took me on a journey and just began to highlight, like, you are really petty. Mm -hmm. You hold on to everything. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. is a 10. Someone said, wow. sweetie, and that they could have just called you out your name. That's not mm -hmm. the same thing. Yeah. He just started to highlight <laughs> just my pettiness, why I escalate everything. Yeah. It's because I'm just angry. Mm -hmm. It's because of a lot of things that have right. happened that it's weren't bitterness. fair. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah. I've it's not great. really, and it's happened already. There's nothing yeah. I can do about it. And I've let it go, but I'm still holding on to right. just that anger. And so I'm having encounters with people. Yeah. And honestly, they're paying for something mm -hmm. that they have yes. nothing to That's do good. and it's just hey Zai, Ooh. why are you so angry? I'm like, no, I'm not. Yes. No, you're angry. That's why there's yes. no need for you to yes. be that mad right yeah. now. Yeah. You're angry, and it just takes me on the journey to just okay, what is it? Right. Yeah, and for me to get God's perspective and right. just some things were really sad mm -hmm. encounter. Yeah. Some things you should really yeah. be upset with. Yes, for sure. But um, I know God can resolve that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And until we do that, I think a lot of us are coming into relationships. Mm -hmm. We're coming into yep. um, just encounters, holding on to a whole lot of things. Right. So you're talking to me right now, but you're not just talking to me. Yeah. You're talking about heartbreak from years ahead. Yeah. So you're really, so you're going to get all yeah. of it. What was required on my part for God to heal my pettiness was just honesty that I am petty and that it's not just everyone else's problem, but perhaps that there's something in me that I don't realize. One of the questions I started asking, like, I know they're saying this, but what if, what if I'm not 100% true? Like, what if I'm not 100% correct? What if there's something um, that makes whatever they said, however their action is valid? And just leaving that little bit of um, 
of question, I think it allows God to kind of come in like, well, actually, you were more than just a little bit wrong in the situation. You were actually 95% wrong in the situation. So I think it just starts with being a little bit more honest with where you are and asking input from the Holy Spirit, really asking God to search me, see if there's anything in me that needs to be fixed. Because honestly, a lot of us have a lot of stuff going on and we might be aware of it, but most of the time, like myself, we're not aware of it. And I think as we continue to read through the scriptures, one of the things I ask is I'm just getting offended by everything, just hurt by everything. And it's just asking God to show me his grace in the word. As I saw his grace demonstrated in his word, I think it gave me the ability to show grace in my world. So first, of course, being honest. And second, asking God to show examples in his word, how he's been gracious. And you'll be surprised when you start to see the model, the type of perspective that you take, the type of forgiveness that you can freely give. I feel like if we're just trying to run, 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 be a good Christian, look like a good Christian, mm -hmm. yeah. do a lot of good Christian things, but we don't allow the mess of grief before the Lord, mm -hmm. we end up like that and we end up escalating Later. things everything, and making people pay for the things that they did not intend, yes. you mm -hmm. know, and just allowing ourselves to go before God and be like, you know what, like that really, really hurt. hurt. Like, yeah. is that a part of our a rhythm, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, I guess that's something to ask ourselves. Yeah. Are we regularly going before God and yeah. licking our wounds yeah. mm -hmm. in His presence, yeah. you mm -hmm. know? And even asking like, does everything need to be addressed? Because like, if an offense happens, I'm like, hey, let's sit down, let's talk about it. Because I'm just like, let's let's get it. But the Lord convicted me where he was like, some things don't need to be addressed. Mm, like, exactly. and you have to figure out like, mm. Nona, what is your motive? Like, right. you're going to go to this person yeah, and talk about this thing. Like that. That's so good. Mm -hmm. For what point? Like, is it that yeah. you just want them to apologize? Is it that you really care about the relationship? Like, what yeah. is it? And there have been several times where offense has come where I didn't address it because what I realized is, number one, I wasn't going to get what I wanted yeah. out of the situation. But number uh -huh. two, just speaking plainly, it didn't really matter that much. It's like, I'm never gonna see this person again or I'll exactly. make them like rarely. And yeah. it's just like, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah. we do, we make mountains out of molehills and then we carry around this bitterness. I think being a woman of faith, you're bound to face heartbreak and disappointment in almost every area of your life, whether it's romantic, before marriage, whether it's in your community, whether it's even within your own biological family. Um, and even aside from my pastoral hat, um, after a while, I realized I cannot go on unless I know how to grieve well. I cannot sustain this life. I cannot carry all these wounds unless I know how to pour it out before God. So before, I used to hate it. I used to try to be a recluse and actually even just be isolated because I felt like isolation meant you're not going to get hurt. When I realized that was not God's will for me, I realized, you know what the key is? I need to learn how to grieve well. I need to, I need to know how to go before the presence of God and tell Him my truth um, in an honest way and receive His word um, in a vulnerable way. And I needed to have those rhythms of grieving in order to really walk with Him in other areas of my life. I think in, in just so much of the rage and chaotic and divisive culture we're in, I think sometimes we can tip over where we want what only belongs to God. Mm. We want vengeance and we want vindication. But there's very few things that the Lord says are mine. And the Lord says, vengeance is mine. And vindication comes from God. So, and this is why things are out of control because I'm yes. kind of watching going, okay, once justice has been done, yeah. um, even if someone has made a mistake, admitted it, uh, paid for it if necessary, done everything yeah. you know to do, biblically, ethically, morally, mm -hmm. legally if necessary, whatever is needed to be done, yeah. if we still can't move past it then, mm -hmm. and then we're, uh, mm -hmm. and in our culture, that's what you're seeing, you're like, so you're saying for the term of their natural life, yeah. so do we eradicate all prison ministry? Do we, for what, why are we doing prison ministry then if we don't think, if, if everyone is cancelled forever, ad infinitum right. because... Right. Right. I want vengeance or I want vindication. There is just a, you know, a larger conversation that needs to be having because I'm like, this is really getting out of control. Vengeance and vindication are gods. And so I think in our hearts, I think we can look at this in every way, our interpersonal relationships, yeah. our marriages. Yeah. I remember, you know, coming from 12 years of sexual abuse, I had to really work hard. 
um, with a therapist and spiritual counsellor because I was making Nick pay for things he had never done to me, never done to me. And so it would have, we wouldn't have the marriage we've got now. And I think so many people watching this, you know, there's there's that, that you bring your past into yeah. your present and your sure. future if you don't deal with it. Um, and I think I always, especially those of us from the faith realm that love to deny things and like, it's under the blood, it's under the blood. You know, yeah. the blood of Jesus does not give you amnesia. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, That's honey, so the blood of Jesus does good. not give you amnesia. It gives you a life beyond your past. And so the thing is that we have to reckon with it. Um, some of us either want to live in it and then get vengeance. Like we perceive this is what my measure of justice is. Yeah. Like you want vengeance, that's mm -hmm. dangerous because now you're in danger. You know, justice is something that's very dear to the heart of God. Can I tell you something else that's dear to the heart of God? It's called vengeance. Justice though is something that you and I as followers of Jesus are to be caught up in. God is a God of justice. He's called us to execute justice on the earth. You know, I run a global anti-human trafficking organization. We want to find justice for the survivors of human trafficking. And that means prosecuting and seeing traffickers sentenced. That's justice. But vengeance, the Lord says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. When we cross over in our hearts to wanting to exact vengeance for perceived injustices, then we have stepped into God's territory. Vengeance is God's. Justice is where we co-labor with God to see shalom and beauty and peace and justice here on earth. And I think it's very important for all of us to understand the difference. Sometimes in our own anger and our own fury, we want to exact from someone a kind of punishment and retribution that actually only belongs to God. The Lord says, vengeance is mine. So let's be a people that works for justice, but we leave the vengeance to God. I've been thinking a lot about this, how yeah. people are weaponizing social media yeah. to cancel people. Mm. I don't even know if they just want vengeance. I think they almost want validation, which gets back to identity. Here's mm -hmm. the thing. When you know who you are in Jesus, I don't have to take you down. No. no. I don't I don't need I don't need revenge. Yep. I don't yeah. need nope. to see you suffer. As a matter nope. of fact, I'm gonna pray that God will stay his hand so that you won't have to suffer just mm -hmm. because my love for God won't let me see you suffer and be proud of it. Yeah. But I think when you take your identity in being a part of a community and you mm -hmm. don't know who you are in Jesus, you will thrive in that anger and that Well, bitterness. very much. That's and I think uh, watching that movie last night for me, I thought, okay, these were awesome. Yeah. investigative journalists doing a phenomenal job that mm. brought down a great injustice happening in mm. a whole institution and system. Okay, not everything is that. There is a difference between a pattern and a precedent and a mistake. That's good. Mm -hmm. Unlike yeah, y'all, people make mistakes. So on one side we go, I'm just flawed, I'm just a mess, we all just make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Then when you do, you bet it's not. like, oh, and you go, there is a difference mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. patterns and precedents and just a mistake. We cannot live on this earth mm. if we can't make mistakes. Yeah. A yeah. Acknowledge them, deal, you know, deal right. with them. Not everyone's going to be happy with how everything's done. Yep. You yeah. go, that's it. Uh -huh. But I'm like, I wonder whether so much of the stress, the anxiety, the mm. attempted suicide, yes. like the things that we're seeing escalating, yeah. I'm like, mm. I think, because that thought that there is no way back, what does the Christian gospel give us above everything is hope. We have a responsibility, we give grace, but you also guard your heart. I think yeah. some of us, yeah. we just live That's all willy-nilly yeah. and yeah. we have exposed ourselves to so much and we're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. That person was gonna hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. there were warning signs Be and all wise. that, but you go in and it's not that everyone is, well, who's gonna hurt me? Right. I'm not talking about living mm -hmm. like Absolutely. that. Yeah. Yeah. But above all else, guard, guard your, heart. your heart. Like be in a relationship, but yeah. guard your heart mm -hmm. so that when disappointment happens, mm -hmm. you're disappointed, but you're not devastated. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You're not so crushed that yeah. you can't go yes. on yes. and you yeah. have to now um, just blast them on yeah. whatever. Yeah. Like it's because you have a response. You weren't that great with the right. boundaries that you have for yourself. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's why you're here right now. I think a lot of us have heard you should guard your heart because out of it flows the issue of life. And sometimes we understand it theoretically, but what does it mean practically? And to me, first of all, I've had issues guarding my heart. I think sometimes you love people so well and so passionately, you feel as if everyone has 100% access to you and that's just 
not the case. Not everyone actually has the best interest for you. And I'm not saying be suspicious of people. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying to hold people in a place where um, they're not the, the top and that only God is the top, only He is on the pedestal. I think sometimes issues arise regarding our heart because we've placed people in positions that are only for God. So when they disappoint us, it's so much harder for us to get over that because they held so much power in our lives and they don't belong there. So guarding our heart looks like assessing constantly your relationships. Where is this person in my life? Yes, they should be close, but where am I placing them? Are they actually above the Lord? And if they are, it's doing the hard work to asking God, hey God, help me shift this. And that might look like adding some boundaries and boundaries aren't bad. I used to think boundaries were so bad, but it's not a bad thing. It's really not. So asking him, what type of boundaries do I need in my life to make sure that this person or this situation isn't the total focus of my attention? That we ask him, the Bible says that he gives us great and unsearchable things that we do not know. So guard your heart. It boils down to we're not emotionally healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, if we start there, then we create boundaries that are healthy. Then we create um, uh, ways that we can process with integrity. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that we make sure that is this something I need to address with the person or let it go? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and then at appropriate measures right. of. Um, of the offense, yeah. the yes. vengeance being the Lord's. You know, we have to be able to weigh all of these things. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of the time we as Christians don't. I think this recently popped in my head. This whole um, bearing false witness thing is real. Okay. We don't realize that when we make assumptions about people yes. and we don't go check yes. in mm -hmm. to make sure if yes. it's true or not, we are bearing yeah, false Matthew witness. 18. That's a commandment. Mm. Yeah. It made it to the Ten Commandments. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. That means it's a big deal. You don't know what wounds are out there that mm -hmm. you're just igniting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I, you know, as leaders, we have to think about even the sheep that are yes. coming to our house to be pastored. Like we, they are coming with wounds, yeah. and they are looking at us through those filters. Yeah. So sometimes when they bite us and they hurt right. us, yeah. it's because of someone else. Yes. And God has called me to be a part of healing them yeah. Yeah. and mm -hmm. showing them that I'm not going to respond to the, you good. the way you've been treated mm -hmm. in the past. So good. So that yeah. painful moment, leader could oh, be yeah. an opportunity Oof, right. to show the redemptive love of the, and the so, reconciliation yeah. power of Jesus Christ yeah. Yeah. in a moment where they are so used to a different response. Yeah. We have an opportunity to show them love and grace and heap grace upon grace and Oof. possibly stand in proxy mm -hmm. and uh, repent. Yes. for whoever it was that hurt them. Yeah. Right. But I'm not that person. Yeah. And can I show you a different way mm -hmm. in the family of God? So here's the thing. I have experienced heartache a number of times and it's tempting to respond to the pain by erecting a wall by guarding our heart and believing that if only I can keep people out, they will never hurt me again. But the problem is the wall that you erect to keep people out becomes the wall that separates you from the opportunity to love. And it was when I realized that, that I learned how to begin extending smart trust, which is trusting people to believe that God can do anything that God can restore what has been lost and He can restore what has been broken. I'm reminded of those people that maybe listening in on this mm -hmm. and feeling like, well, I can't, I can't do that. Like, mm -hmm. I can't be the bigger person here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't. Because let's just be honest, sometimes heartbreak can be blinding. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. totally. Just pain True. could be blinding. Just like what you were saying yeah. before, being in fetal mm -hmm. position, like, pain could be so merciless mm. and I could totally resonate and empathize with somebody that's like, yeah, I know, don't slander. Yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, vengeance is not mine. Yeah, I get it. But what am I going to do about this pain? Yeah. And so, you know, and I'm sure being a part of the church, mm. we've yeah. counseled many people that are like, okay, yeah. And you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's just not, not good enough. And the only, and I've come into many conversations where when it came down to it, I'm like, only the presence of God mm -hmm. has a heavier weight than your pain. Yes. Absolutely. Like, yes. even if you were to call this person out, 
it's not going to do anything. Yeah. You know, even if we did something about it, it's not going to do mm-hmm. much. But mm-hmm. the only thing that can be heavier than that pain is the presence of God. One thing that I know sometimes we try to avoid, but we cannot avoid, is the presence of God is not only real, but He's beyond the natural. He's supernatural, meaning we could experience Him and we could know Him. We could receive convictions from Him. We could be led by Him. And these are things that I know sometimes can be very frustrating for some people that feel like, well, I've never been there. And this is not to say, oh, you have to have a certain experience in order to be considered um, a successful Christian. But it is to say that the experience of the presence of God is available to you in your darkest hour, in your pain, in your sorrow. And when you do, when you you receive His love, when you receive His words, His comfort, and even His help, you will realize that, you know what, you're still in pain, but you could also have joy. You could still be brokenhearted, but you could still be in love. A revelation God gave me many years ago, um, for those who don't know my story, very dysfunctional childhood. Um, My mother's boyfriend sexually abused me for many years, starting at the age of five through 11. Uh, I worked up the courage to tell her at seven what was going on. She had him arrested. On the day of his release from jail, she brought him back home. The abuse resumed again. Um, I share all this because when I was about 20, I um, was driving my mom somewhere and I said, you know, I really would like for us to talk about what happened in my childhood because, you know, we don't have a regular relationship and I would like us to. Mm -hmm. And to give you an indication of the type of mother I have, um, she turned to me and she said, well, uh, it wouldn't have happened if you would have just kept your legs closed. That was her diagnosis of the situation. Now, I tell you that because for so many years, people would pressure me. Like, you need to make the relationship with your mom work. You need to get it Mm -hmm. right. You need to. And I'm like, first of all, I'm the child. Why aren't you telling her this? But I felt this burden to try to make it right. Mm -hmm. And God helped me one day realize that relationships are actually two sides of one coin. Mm -hmm. On the one side is forgiveness, right? So when when there's an offense, yeah. We forgive so that we can get free. But on the other side of that coin is mm. repentance. Yes, mm-hmm. there is. Come on. And if a person is not repentant mm. for yeah. what they've done, they're basically going to do it again. And there comes a point where you can forgive, but that doesn't mean you have to be in relationship Absolutely. with an Absolutely. unrepentant person. Yes. Yes. And so yeah. some of us are like, oh, I just, I can't move on. It's like, well, you do have the power to forgive, which essentially forgiveness is just releasing your future from the pain of your past. That's yeah. what, fu- what forgiveness is. But that doesn't mean you have to be in relationship yes, with an unrepentant person. Yeah. And my hope is that someone who's watching this and who is in that situation yeah. where they're just like, I, I just, I can't, I can't move on. Just know that you are not expected to be in relationship right. with someone who themselves right. is not healed and is not whole. Mm-hmm. Right. You are, however, expected to exercise the power of forgiveness so that you can get free mm-hmm. because yes. that is the gift God has Absolutely. given to us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's where I believe our responsibility resides. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Can I say, I didn't know your story, but mm-hmm. wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. It gets complicated with the family members. I, mm-hmm. Blaming so me. So complicated. Yeah. yeah. That's mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think for you to even speak, like I can imagine those years, the enemy trying to steal your voice and for you to be where you are now, I think you're helping so many. It just encouraged me. So thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it happens sure, even yeah. today. Mm-hmm. Like, I have family members today who are like, I can't believe you talk about this. And and it's like, no, I, I have to. Yes. Because mm-hmm. there are so many people who think that they're the only ones. Right. And yeah. then they're being forced into relationships yeah. that are not healthy. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, that is not your responsibility right. to subject yourself sure. to another person's refusal to repent mm-hmm. for what they've done. So over the past seven years, I would say, I have been on a journey a journey of recovery, uh, restoring relationships that were broken during a time where I was really unhealthy. And as I approached each relationship, I made sure I had processed with integrity, with a, a counselor, with God, with my pastor, with someone with wisdom, before I approached the people that I wanted to acknowledge that I had caused pain to. And when I did, some people, didn't accept my apology. They rejected it. 
And in those moments, I really did something very intentional to help through that moment. And you may be confronted with that situation too. So what my counselor and what the Lord has shown me is I have to create space between myself and the other person. God made us uniquely with different experiences. We are separate human beings. And I need to respect and honor someone else's space if they need time to process what I've brought to them. So I have done my part and I have brought humbly asked for forgiveness. The rest, I have to trust that the Lord will work on the person's heart and I have to respect exactly where they are um, and honor that. I know it's hard, but it's worth it. And you never know reconciliation is gonna come because God, he's a redeeming God, right? He reconciles. But we have to trust him with that process. It might not come when we want it, how we want it, but it'll come if you trust and wait on him. Let me just kind of reiterate to anyone watching this, if you are in any kind of situation or relationship where there's any danger, any physical violence, you you need to go and get help uh, to be out of that. And we're never discussing if there's anything abusive going on. There are uh, legal channels to face. I'm all about that. We're we're talking here in the realm of interpersonal relationships that are offences and unforgiveness. But people need to know that because for a long time, you know, in in certain streams of the church, people have Mm -hmm. been told, well, even if their husband was beating them, you know, just stay stay and pray. I'm like, uh, and I'm saying, don't stay. And you can Pray from a distance in a yeah, safe place. It's yeah. like, yes, yeah, so that you're never going to get that from Mm-mm. us or in any kind of abusive relationship. Sure. Um, we want people to get out. So it's a fine line. And I think because God in his great grace and mercy has exposed so much yeah. in, in the secular world and in the church world, it needed to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we have to be careful uh, for those of us not in those situations at all, that we don't try to escalate every Everything. minor right. offence right. to that. Mm. I think that's the point of what we're trying to make right. here um, because it, it will put you in bondage. That's mm. what my, my fear for a generation is that they're going to be in bondage to so that nice. um to, to the fact that they don't know how to forgive yeah. mm-hmm. and they don't know how to yeah. move yes. on yeah. by, by yeah. dealing with it, grieving and then moving on. We were given those tools. Mm-hmm. Probably my generation erred a little bit too much on, not, you know, on <laughs> staying and praying. Um, you know, now ours is like, um, you know, but now I think we can have that that great middle place where you could go yes. can be in a place of safety. We've got many more tools from psychology than we, yeah. we and we talk about things a lot more openly yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Um, but you still have to do the hard work of forgiveness. You know, when you come from a background of sexual abuse and get married, if you don't really work through the pain and the trauma of your past, you're going to carry past experiences into your present circumstances. And in my case, I remember when I was still had so many broken areas in my life when Nick and I were first married, I, there were so many areas that, that I would just react and, and things would trigger me. And it was really not Nick's fault at all. It's just it would remind me of certain things and phrases and actions that happened to me in my past. And then my reaction to Nick would be like me making Nick pay for something that Nick never did to me, that other men way back in my childhood did to me. And so I had to really begin to be open because it was causing tension in our marriage because poor Nick's like, what am I doing? And it really wasn't him. It was me. So I had to get honest. I had to ask his forgiveness. And then I also had to go and get counseling so that I could work through this process and understand what were those things that were triggering me? Where were areas that I needed to deal and allow the Holy Spirit to come deep into my life and heart and bring wholeness and healing so that my marriage can continue to move forward and flourish as God's plan and purpose was for my marriage and that I wouldn't be like a a weird mum, but I would be a healthy mother. You'll always bring your past into your present and it will impact your future if you do not choose to deal with your past. Don't make other people pay for what someone else did for you in your past. For anyone struggling with forgiveness, it's especially if you call yourself a believer, Mm -hmm. then One of the things I do now is um, just get a picture of the cross, like go through it, Mm -hmm. like go through the cross, actually see him Mm -hmm. crucified and know like 
he did that for you. Right. Yeah. And I think once you see it, like visually see it, then it starts to, okay, then this yeah. thing that I'm upset does not yeah. compare, compare to that. Yeah. And he's forgiven. Like just for me, just that picture of the cross just mm. almost levels everything out and it resets right. my emotions. That's good. And so that I can approach it um, just level-headed, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. But that helps me. And I think I'm hoping it helps someone else too. Mm. I think in regards to the topic of heartbreak, one thing that we covered was all the unhealthy ways to deal yeah. with heartbreak. Yeah. yeah. I feel like one thing I hope that anybody that's listening in is a full understanding that the Holy Spirit is a comforter. I mean, mm. yes. is a comforter. Yeah. And as in to say, you know what, you're not going to get your resolution by making somebody pay, but mm. you will find your resolution in the presence of God. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? And that's sure. something that I would love to invite everyone that's tuning in to pray into. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. Yes. You know, I feel like sometimes we're in a fight to get everyone to care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Care about what happened to me. That's mm -hmm. so good. But nobody will care like Jesus cared. Amen. You know, um, so I'd love mm. to pray yeah. for the viewers right now. Um, I really feel like mm. some people tuning in are wrestling with a pain that's just unmanageable. Yeah. And they don't know how to go about it in a healthy way. So can we just pray right now? Yes. Lord Jesus, mm. uh, we lift up every sister um, family member, everybody that's just tuning in right now. God, I just pray that um, you being the comforter will be so real to them in this moment, that there will be an awakening of an awareness of your nearness, God. Just as much as they are aware of how much it hurts, they are aware of how unfair it was. And they're watching injustice ensue. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you will be by their side. Jesus, you are still the victor over this pain. God, we thank you that we are still standing on victory, even when we are in tears, even when we are in grieving. We thank you that your throne room is wide open for us, thanks to the blood of Jesus, that we may go to you no matter what, in whatever circumstances. God, we love you. And I just pray that Everyone tuning in will know your healing grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.